Black Ink Crew Season 3 episode. Right now, I really don't know because I can check my info for VH1. So, I will have the information in the title box. So, let's get into this review. <laughs> Hold on. Was it me uh, when I was watching Sky on Black Ink? Like, was it me or what? Did I feel like A comes going to pop out at any minute or the bit, the producer going to play? I'm locked up. They won't let me out. I'm locked up. They won't let me out. I feel like I was going to hear Akon just come out. Like, instead of trying to find the murder, I don't want to. I was like, where's where Akon when you freaking need him? Like, that was just too funny. But anyway, we start the episode off with Donna and oh shit. She called, Donna calls oh shit after the intimate, after the thing, um, after the fight has happened. And he already got wind of it because Caesar told him, and of course, the producer stopped it up, so I'm I'm sitting here like, okay. So she calls him, and she immediately blows up, puts her out, and then he got, got to go. And she's sitting there like, and her confessional is being very, I'm like, how stupid are you? You are the side chick. You're messing with a man who has a fiancé and baby. You have nothing to offer him at this point, but a person that was he was getting high with, a person he was giving it up easy to, and a person he could talk to because he knows if he would have talked to Donna, that... He, she's not gonna go for the BS, and you're the type of person who's gonna go for the BS. So of course he's gonna have to confide in you. And I don't think I don't know where you got in your mind that you were gonna be the main bitch, and he was just gonna side with you. No, you got into his with his fiance. You're the side chick, and you already know in side chick book the number one rule in side chick book 101 is the side chick and the mistress never meet the main chick, the or one who's married, fiance, or his wife. You just don't do that because anything is bound to happen. And of course, of course, uh, Anya is not stupid. She know he know she knows oh shit like the back of her book, which I don't know why she's marrying him. But hey, that's her own situation. But you going to that uh event and state starting what you did, and then think you're gonna call oh shit everything's gonna be okay. You know he puts her behind out, and that was the situation. I don't know why you thought what you thought, but. You got exactly what you deserve. You don't want, then you, I mean, I, Donna, Donna, I really don't know what else to tell you. Somebody, you're disappointed. He you should, you don't need to be with her. You need to be with me. Girl, go sit yourself down somewhere and find your life and live it. Please. He's a gold business. Oh shit. In rehab. And, um, I get, he got, he has a past and he goes, talks about a situation about him progressing and him actually making a new step in his life. And, Basically, that is it. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. Yeah, well, I would just say that in this situation with Oshie being we have, I would hope and pray that he's taking the situation as an opportunity to really, really get his life together, stop making excuses for himself, marry Anya, take care of his kids. And just stop the BS. It's time out. It's life is too short to be playing BS games the way he's playing and just taking life for granted. And now, this is his last step because to make any more bad choices, and he's not gonna, he's gonna, his life is gonna be taken away from him. And somebody, he's gonna be told when to do something, when not to do something. So I'm saying, I'm like, there's no way to live. I don't care how you was brought up. There's no excuse for you just to go around the world and fight, uh, feel like somebody's gonna feel sorry for you. You do not live in that type of world. No, nothing's gonna be given to you unless you break forth. So, oh shit, you have a career. Obviously, the H1 is doing very well right now with the reality show. So, take advantage of it and get your life together. That's all I have for you for this segment.
while Oshit is in rehab, Caesar has brought in a tattoo, uh, um, one of the head tattoo artists, and when he's, I guess he's famous, public figure in Dallas, Texas, Texas, and the band from Houston, Texas, so they think that that's nice. Texas, Texas on the map. But anyway, brings in some talented artists who's going to be working in Oshit's spot while he's, you know, in rehab. And they throw a party for him. The mixes is going, I mean, you already know how Black Ink do it. But what was funny, I think what it was so funny because Ted's like, let the party begin. He goes and takes lemon pepper chicken and drops it like Puma did. And that, I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you, if, um, Black Ink ever go out for, uh, season where they don't come back and they shut the show down, that is going to be the number one legendary moment. Always. That was, cause it, that was just, that was just too funny. But anyway, they throw a party for him, everybody then did side. One of her friends walked in, which she, she brought in the mix of Black Ink, so she made her own friends, so she's talking to everybody. She did not acknowledge Sky at all. And she, her, Sky are like, real, they family, they real good friends. So she, it took her 30, 30 to 45 minutes to acknowledge Sky. Sky looked like, really? Like, and then when she finally talks to her after Sky goes over there and sit down, and Sky just looking like, I should just go smack the shit out of this bitch. Like, like the struggle is definitely there. You're just going to come in my establishment and you're not going to say anything. So that's how it is. And then when she, then when she they finally acknowledged Sky, she's my hi, mommy. Sky went the dog, went the F off of her. Like, really? You can't say, hey, how you doing? What's up? You're going to ask how mommy doing? So I would fuck up off on her, and then they go outside. They tried to make it seem like it was going to be some type of big fight, but so you can tune in for the last couple of seconds, but it really wasn't that. And VH1, I'm going to need y'all, and the producers of Black Ink, I'm going to try to keep it together, because we do not need to see the cameraman running outside trying to um, catch this um, conversation with Ted and um, her, and then her inside. I think that was very childish, you know, I think that was very low budget of you to do that. Should have X him out of it, and we should have got the scene with him talking. But they talked it out. She apologized. So obviously that's going to be some type of beef because obviously there's something wrong because I don't understand unless that's just her personality that you walk to somebody else's establishment, see your family member, and your close friend sitting over there, and that's not that's not the first place to go talk to. Nor did I see I seen her go talk to them, but I really didn't see her acknowledge too much too many people. So and then you're not going to acknowledge your family sitting over there. So I think that was very low budget of her, I thought that was very disrespectful of her, I thought that was very childish and mature. But with that being said, they talked it out and Sky took the high road, you can tell she's maturing and which I love with me Sky. She's not fighting in the back of the yards anymore, I'm throwing drinks or throwing bowls and slapping and pushing people. I'm glad she took the high road to fight with her words and let her mouth do the talking instead of her sit. Then from there Sky, uh, we meet Sassy's girlfriend. Sassy, uh, brings her girlfriend, a long time friend that's now a girlfriend, to Ink124, and she's coming to Sassy to get her tattoo. Uh, when she first started the season, she got a, uh, tattoo, and the tattoo for some, uh, represents some, some type of women empowerment for her, and it's, and it's, the gun is missing a trigger, and they kind of encourage her to, you know, get the trigger, and I'm like, okay, let's see, nice tattoo. She wants to get the tattoo face before she does the photo shoot, which she's now going to introduce her, Girlfriend, she's in, she's on um, a list. She's bisexual. She's like men and women, just like more women, more women than men. So, with that being said, she's gonna she talks to Puma and the rest of her, and they're like she's gonna introduce her girlfriend to her mother, which is a big step. In which her mom knows she's gay, but she's never brought a woman home. Which now in next week's episode, we're gonna see how that goes with the photo shoot and her mom meeting her. So that was pretty much that. We get the next scene. Sky is being that, Sky is being arrested. So, Sky has some type of felony and criminal charge against her. And I guess they from Atlanta, and she got to Philly. And when that happened, they caught up to her when she's trying to get her, when she was denied access for transport so she can go to Paris with Duchess. So now they are located her, they know where she is now, they have her address. So, with that being said, of course, they found her and she's been arrested. Because of that criminal charge, and she's not been going to probation. So with that, that's, that's making it harder on the charge. You're not going to probation. Then you fight, and then you see fighting on live television. So it's like, 
okay, now that she's not learning from her experience, so we need to incarcerate her. They incarcerate her and they threw her out to Phoenix. And Phoenix is hot, it's desert like, and she's out, way, way, way out, and they're gonna, um, she's presumed, they, cause, um, Teddy, Caesar, Duchess, and, um, and, um, uh, Walter, they all flew out to Kentucky. And before that, Teddy also was trying to find it with whether they got her out or bail or put money in her book or her books or whatever. He sold his sneakers and you know Teddy's a sneaker lover. So with that, I thought that was very nice of Teddy and I'm seeing a grown man Teddy, but I you still don't know where he worked at. Last time I checked he's the manager of Black King. I don't know if he's just there or if he because I really don't see him doing anything if he's still the manager of Black King. I don't really see him doing too much or a lot around there because every time we see him he's next to our guy beefing with Caesar, with Walter, or at 8124, and I'm like, okay. So they b both um go to see um Sky, meet up with Laura, and Laura tells them that she's going to get nine years because of the family, and I'm not going to probation and doing what the law asks us to do. She's basically in, in supporting it. So with that being said, we get the lawyer meeting up with Sky. And Sky and tells her that Caesar and everybody came to see her. Her boyfriend did not come to see her. I guess she felt some type of way about that. But anyway, she really didn't not elaborate on to that. But Laurie spoke with her and said, you know, it really did not work in our favor. We were hoping to get you off, but we cannot get you off. And it also did not work in the court's favor also. So you're going to get too much, too much, um, fed, you're going to get too much fed time, like fed or county time, you did say. So she's gonna spend too much, too much in Phoenix. And a child that don't even celebrate Black History Month, uh, Martin Luther King Day, according to her, she's in a very white, populated, populated, um, area. So, I, I can see that she's changing, and I see that, I know that James, uh, Jill will change her because she's gonna spend a lot of time by herself, a lot of time to think and commemorate on her life and what she needs to change, a lot. Of um, breaking walls being broken down a lot of crying, so she's going to be a new person when she walks out, and I'm pretty sure that she's going to appreciate um, things that have been in her life. She's going to appreciate life. She's going to appreciate being free. So with that being said, I hated to see Sky like that, crying and incarcerated and cuffs being on her. But I'm the type of person, whatever it takes, where you can live a better life and appreciate everything that has been given to you. And everything that you take for granted every day, if it takes going to jail for you to realize that, then hey, I'm all for it. I hate to see her like that because Sky is my girl, but shout out to Sky and she the cast is like you, but I hate to see her like that. But if it took for that situation for her to uh, realize that, hey, I'm taking life for granted, I'm taking things for granted, I need to get myself together, then so be it. Take this time to focus on Sky and get Sky together. Uh, also in this episode, Caesar and Teddy talk because of Scott's guys to get them together. They, have, they talk about the judge, the judge situation, and Caesar also admitted that, yeah, that's was the reason why him and Puma is not, but she's, he's like, I'm glad she did that. And I'm like, Caesar, I mean, I'm, Caesar's really childish. Really, really childish. He does not know how to grow up and be a man in any situation. And I'm like, it took you that long to talk to your family. I see how you treat your friends, now I'm seeing how you treat your family, but I'm glad Scott was the biggest person to get these two together, because them, they just, this child, you're a family, you're blood, and you can't, you're grown man, you can't talk, to them, you can't talk to each other about what's the difference and what the beef is and what the problem is, so, glad Scott did that, and glad they came to an agreement and came to an end with that situation, and we get the last scene, with, um, Scott, after Scott meets the glory and everything, finds out about the time, which she gets off free. So with that being said, we get a little small recap of what's going to happen next week with Sassy and her girlfriend meeting the mother, and the mother's bathing out, and Sky in jail. I did not know that, um, they, they will allow cameras in jail just to film you. Uh, I guess, I guess VH1. It's playing a, a hefty check to them if they would have producers and camera to fly out just to get footage of Sky in jail walking out lonely like she's been in uh like uh what's what is that movie called uh Lockdown 
I'm like, okay. I'm like, is this MSNBC locked? But uh, anyway, and also, they are just laughing about, you know, they knew, they knew about the situation with Donna and Anya, and they already knew what happened. And Dutch just basically really set that up, and uh, Donna said what he did it, and went up there and thought she was going to be cool on Matata. But anyway, they're laughing about the situation. I'm like, okay, these people ain't loyal anyway, because your co-workers are laughing at you. That shows you how dumb and stupid you look, Donna. So with that being, and of course, it's like, of course they had to pull, even with them not being there, they know what happened, because guess what? That's my security broke it up. BH1 produces and security broke it up. So of course, of course, um, uh, Donna, uh, not Donna, but, uh, God, I hate when they do that. Of course, we have seen five, sixteen fights, he fighting, and they had to break it up, so. That being said, this is season three. The episode, I don't know, I feel like in crew. I will have the title of this episode, and also have the information below. Follow me on all my social media accounts. Like, comment, subscribe on this video, share on all social media accounts. Let me know your thoughts on the situation with Teddy growing up, with Scott being incarcerated, with Donna being kicked to the curb, with rehab situation of oh shit, the, uh, love, um, commemorates with. Um, Don, with not Donna, but with Caesar and Duchess, and how you think Black is being ran, and things of that nature. So, let me know your thoughts and everything. Follow me on all social media accounts, information in the morning box below. Um, take a look at my blog. I will have more stories up as far as personal blog, and I'm also still in the middle of booking my flight for Atlanta Blackout event. Please, um, donate to that event, and also if you're in the Atlanta area, or if you're flying out, make sure you get that taken care of, and donate, and be there, because I cannot wait to meet all of you guys, I can't wait to network, take pictures, video, have fun, and eat, and be around a positivity, positive, positive people who are doing something in their life, so, can't wait to link up, can't wait to meet you guys, um, so hit me up. Anytime you need to, on social media accounts, DM me, follow me, I'll follow you back on all social media accounts. So, with that being said, peace and love, and until next video.